Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering priority and delegation. This is very, very, very important. If you're a nursing student, you're going to see uh, these types of questions on your exams. Um, you're gonna see them on exit exams, and you are definitely going to see them on NCLEX. So it's something that you have to understand. So I'm going to be going over the different concepts of priority and delegation. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. You know you're gonna love this video. And please engage with me in the comments, help my algorithm, help this channel go grow. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover. And don't forget guys, almost every single day, I cover a variety of questions on my other social media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Now, before we get started, I wanna start this video with a prayer. If you're not into that, that's fine, just fast forward. But if you are, please close your eyes, by your head. Father God, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for the breath of life in our bodies. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together and go over this information. Lord, I ask that you please help me as I deliver this information, Father God. I ask that you speak through me, Jesus. Let it not be me, but let it be you, Lord. All of the important concepts that these students need to know, help me to explain it in a way that they can understand it, they can receive it, and they can remember it, Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray for every single viewer right now, whatever it is that they're going to that they find is an obstacle or a barrier to them understanding the information and being able to pass their test. Lord, I ask that you remove those barriers right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, I ask that you bless every single viewer, Lord. I ask that you help them to be able to or be more organized to help them to be able to prioritize their time, Father God. Anybody that's a hindrance to them, Jesus, from passing their test, Lord, I ask that you remove them out of the way, Lord. I ask that you please bless them, help them do well on their exams, Jesus Christ. The students who's been trying to pass the NCLEX for so long that cannot pass, Lord, I ask that you help them to pass that exam. And Lord, when they get that license, allow them to be a blessing to others. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gifts and talents that you place into every single one of us. And Lord, I ask that you help us to use those gifts and talents to bless somebody else. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I praise your name and I give you all the glory in Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. First question. A nurse from the medical surgical unit is asked to work on the orthopedic unit. The medical surgical nurse has no orthopedic experience. Which client should be assigned to the medical surgical nurse? One, a client with a cast for a fractured femur who has numbness and discoloration of the toes. Two, a client with balanced skeletal traction who needs assistance with morning care. Three, a client who had an above the knee amputation yesterday and has a temperature of 101.4. Or four, a client who had a total hip replacement two days ago and needs blood glucose monitoring. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer is four or D. I keep saying numbers, D guys. D is the correct answer. A client who had a total hip replacement two days ago and needs blood glucose monitoring. So there are a couple things that we need to talk about here. Whenever um, we're looking at priority and delegation, you are going to delegate, even though they're a registered nurse, if they are a new registered nurse, they're a new grad, or they're a registered nurse, they've been registered nurse for years, but they're new to your floor, right? Or if you have, um, what's the third one? I'm missing one, it'll come to me. But anyway, these type of nurses, you are going to give them the most stable patient. You know how when you're delegating to an LPN, you have to give the LPN the most stable patient? Same thing, brand new nurse or new nurse to your floor, you're going to give them the most stable patient. And out of these different scenarios, D is the most stable patient. Let's take a look. Um, they had a total hip replacement two days ago. It's not like it's a fresh hip replacement where you have an in-depth assessment to do that the um, experienced RN would see. It was two days ago, that's number one. And two, they need blood glucose monitoring. Any RN can do blood glucose monitoring. It's not specialized to the orthopedic floor, which she's not familiar with. And I keep saying she, but it may be a male, he or she is not familiar with. Now let's look at the other choices so I can explain to you why they're wrong. One, A, excuse me, a client with a cast for a fractured femur. Let's stop right there. Whenever you see a test question and they mention a cast, one of the first things that needs to be going to your mind is um, compartment syndrome. 
okay? So the fact that they said cast already, I'm thinking compartment syndrome. That's one of the first things that need to go through your head. So let's keep going. They have a uh, cast, <gasps> numbness, and discoloration of the toes. Yeah, so that patient needs um, uh, in-depth assessment, right? You're gonna be checking those six Ps. I can never remember all six. Pulse, paralysis, pain, poiki, poikothermogenesis. What's the other two? Pulse, pallor, pain, poikothermogenesis. I can never. There's two more. It's not coming to my mind. Look it up, guys. Let me know in the comments. I can never remember all six. But anyway, you need to be checking um, all those six Ps because you're thinking compartment syndrome. So it takes an experienced nurse who's been working on the orthopedic floor to even, you know, recognize this. Well, not recognize this. Any uh, nurse, licensed nurse should recognize it. But what I'm saying is it takes a nurse who's been working on that floor with experience. They should keep that patient because they're not the most stable patient, right? Because if it is compartment syndrome, that patient's gonna need to go into surgery, right? Choice B, a balanced uh, skeletal traction who needs morning care we can give that to a uap that's not the most stable patient okay that's something that could be given uh to a uap but we got to be careful because um they do have skeletal traction uh see the above the knee amputation yesterday so they just had surgery yesterday remember guys any patient who has surgery we're always going to be concerned about infection we're going to be concerned about hemorrhage and we're going to be concerned about a DVT and that deep clot possibly moving, going to the patient's lung and causing a pulmonary embolism, which is a medical emergency. So that is a concern. They had it, um, the amputation two days ago and they got a temperature of 101.4. I just told you post-op, we're concerned about, concerned about DVT slash PE hemorrhage and what? Infection 101.4. That patient's not stable. So the most stable patient is, um, choice D, that's why we're giving it to that uh, new nurse. And because the blood glucose monitoring, this is routine and patient had the hip surgery two days ago. It's not something that's acute, immediate, just happened right now. That's the most stable patient. Next question. The nurse plans care for a client undergoing a colposcopy. Which of the following actions should the nurse take first? One, discuss the client's fear regarding potential cervical cancer. B, assist with silver nitrate application to the cervix to control bleeding. C, provide instructions regarding douching and sexual relations. Or D, administer pain medications. And guys, the correct answer is B, assist with silver nitrate application to the cervix to control what? Bleeding. Guys, when we are talking about priority, the patient's physiological integrity is always going to be number one. What do I mean by physiological integrity? When we talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, physiological integrity is always priority. Airway, breathing, circulation. That patient's hemodynamic status, make sure they're not hemorrhaging or bleeding to death. Vital signs, uh, fluid electrolytes, glucose, rest, anything that physically keeps that patient alive or can kill them the fastest that is going to take priority. So B is the correct answer, guys, because we need to control bleeding. We're not trying to have that patient bleed out. Hemodynamic status, that is physiological integrity. Now, the other choices, talking about their feelings such as fear, that's important, but that's not priority because who cares about that patient's fear if they're bleeding out? Providing instructions. Teaching is important, but that does not take precedence over controlling bleeding. What's the last one? And pain. Pain is important, needs to be administered, um, needs to be addressed. But again, who cares about that pain if that patient's bleeding out, right? So our priority is to control the bleeding. Next question. A nurse is caring for four clients who's preparing to do her initial rounds. Which client should the nurse assess first? A, a client with diabetes being discharged today. B, a client with tracheostomy and copious secretions. C, a client scheduled for physical therapy this morning. Or D, a client with a pressure ulcer that needs dressing change. And guys, the correct answer is B, the client with a tracheostomy and what? Copious secretions. What does copious mean? That means excessive. That means a lot. Airway. If that patient has copious secretions, how the oxygen going to get through? Physiological integrity always takes priority guys 
ABC, airway breathing circulation, hemodynamic status, nutrition, fluid and electrolytes, rest, right? So that's the correct answer. Patient that's being discharged, yes, they need to be seen. There's lots of discharge teaching, but that's not a priority. You remember, we always have to go to the most unstable patient. Choice C, that patient that's going to physical therapy, there's nothing in there that tells us that that patient's unstable. And choice D, the patient that needs a dressing change. Yes, it's important. Let's get to them, but there's nothing that says that that patient is, um, well, I can't say that they're not unstable because they do need the dressing change. But when you compare that dressing change to that patient that has copious amounts of secretions, which means the oxygen is not going to get through, who's in more danger of dying? The airway, choice B. A nurse enters a room and finds a client lying on the floor. Which action should the nurse perform first? A, call for help to get the client back in bed. B, establish whether the client is responsive. C, at, what does that say? C, assist the client back to bed. Or D, ask the client what happened. And guys, the correct answer is B, establish whether the client is responsive. Add pie. Assessment first, then your nursing diagnosis, planning, intervention, and evaluation. The first thing you're going to do is see if they're responsive. Mr. Such and Such, are you okay? And if they open their eyes and look at you and say, no, I'm dead. Are they dead? No, they're breathing. They're talking to you. They have a pulse. So the first thing you're going to do is see if they're responsive. They're not responsive. You better check for a pulse. What sense does it make? You see that patient on the ground. They may not be breathing. They may not have a pulse, but you're wasting time calling for help when you haven't even assessed that patient yet you're going to assess them first the correct answer is b a nurse preceptor is working with a new nurse and notes that the new nurse is reluctant to delegate tasks to members of the care team the nurse preceptor recognizes that this reluctance is most likely due to a role modeling behaviors of the preceptor b the philosophy of the new nurse's the new nurse's school of nursing, C, the orientation provided to the new nurse, or C, a lack of trust in team members. And guys, the correct answer is C, lack of trust in team members. Here's the thing, as the registered nurse, you need to understand this. Anything that you delegate, you're still responsible for. So that means before you delegate anything, you need to make sure number one, whatever you're delegating should be delegated. So you're not going to delegate the most unstable patient to an LPN, that most unstable patient you need to keep. All right. And when you're delegating, let's say you're delegating to an unlicensed assistive personnel before you delegate something, you need to make sure that they know how to do whatever it is that you're delegating. And then after you delegate it, you have to go back after, behind that person and assess that patient and make sure whatever it was that you delegated was done correctly. Or maybe it might not take an assessment, it might take, may take, well, let me not say not take assessment because it does. You need to go and check on that patient, make sure whatever it was that you delegated was done because you are still responsible for anything that you delegate. And so D is the correct answer. That patient, that uh, new nurse just got their license and they're not trying to lose it. D is the correct answer. A client presents to the emergency room with dyspnea, chest pain, and syncope. The nurse assesses the client and notes that the client is pale and diaphoretic with blood pressure of 94 over 60, respirations 32. The client's anxious fear, and fearing death. What actions should the nurse take first? What, uh, A, administer pain medication, B, administer IV fluids, C, administer dopamine, or D, administer oxygen pronasal cannula. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer is D. You're going to give them oxygen via nasal cannula. Why do you think they have that dyspnea, they have that chest pain, they have that syncope, they have that fear of doom of death? No perfusion. Those heart muscles are screaming for perfusion. They're screaming for oxygen. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is give them oxygen. Then after that, you can give them the IV fluids. You can give them the dopamine as ordered. You can administer the pain because absolutely that pain needs to be addressed, right? You give them morphine as ordered or whatever it is that's ordered. But the first thing you're going to do that, um, do them. The first thing that you're going to do is give them oxygen. A nurse in a long 
long-term care facility is planning care for an elderly client with confusion. What action should the nurse take first? A, sit the client in a geriatric chair with an activity. B, apply a vest restraint when the client's in the chair. C, apply bilateral wrist restraints when the client is in bed. Or D, have staff members sit with the client at all times. And guys, the correct answer is A, sit the client in a geriatric chair with an activity, okay? So you're gonna sit them in the geriatric chair and give them something to do. Now look at the other choices, B and C, applying vest restraints and wrist restraints. Are you trying to lose your license? Do you have an order for those restraints? Is there anything in the question that told us that, is there anything in the question that tells us that this patient needs restraints? Absolutely not. So those are false. And look at D, have a staff member sit with the client at all times. That's not necessary. There's nothing in this question that tells us that the patient is a risk to injure themselves or someone else. So why do they need a one-on-one? -on -one? Have them sit in the geriatric chair with something to do. Give them an activity. The nurse is providing care in the emergency department to the client with chest pain. What action is most important for the nurse to do first? A, perform venipuncture, start an IV line. B, administer oxygen via nasal cannula. C, administer morphine sulfate IV. Or D, start lidocaine infusion. And guys, the correct answer is B. We talked about this already. Oxygen, who cares about anything else if your patient's not breathing? If your patient's not being perfused. If they're not being perfused, guess what? Physiological integrity, which is our priority, is going down. So that is the correct answer. Next question. A nurse arrives on the scene of a multi-motor vehicle accident. The nurse determines that which of the following clients should be seen first. A, a 48-year-old male who's pale, diaphoretic, and reporting chest pain and shortness of breath. B, a 16-year-old male with ecchymosis, pain, and swelling of the right arm. C, a 42-year-old female who has a laceration on the forehead and is reporting neck and shoulder pain. Or D, an 8-year-old child who is crying hysterically and reports abdominal pain. And guys, the correct answer is A. The 48-year-old male who's pale, circulation, if you have good circulation, it's supposed to be nice and pink, right? They're pale, diaphoretic sweating, and they're reporting chest pain, shortness of breath. Pop, what are we thinking? Possible MI. That's going to be our priority because that's the most unstable person on this list. Everybody else, guys, yes, they need to be addressed, but their injuries are not as life-threatening as our concern with the patient who possibly is having an MI, right? And guys, we are down to our last question. I can't believe I, I went through this video uh, pretty quickly because I use the same amount of questions I normally cover. So I'm sorry if I went through this video quickly, guys. The great thing is YouTube, you can watch it again and again. So this is our last question. Uh, child reports to the camp nurse's office after stepping on a B. The child has pain, erythema, and edema of the lower aspect of the left foot. As the nurse is observing the foot, the child says, I feel my, like my throat is getting tight. The first action the nurse should take is A, assess the child's airway and breathing, B, call 911 and request an ambulance, C, administer sub-Q epinephrine, or D, remove the stinger from the foot. And guys, the correct answer is A, assess the child's airway and breathing. They just told you that they think that their chest is getting tight. And in the question, there's a hint, B, we know, especially in peds, lots of kids may be allergic to bee stings. So they told you the child was stuck, was stung by a bee or they stepped on a bee and all of a sudden their throat is closing up. The first thing you're going to do is assess um, their airway. You're suspecting the patient's possibly having an anaphylactic reaction. And when I say assess, I mean look. Okay, you do not stick anything into their mouth. You do not put a tongue blade down there because that simple action may be enough to cause that throat to close up. When I say assess, I mean you just look. That is the first thing you're going to do. Then, guys, um, administer the sub-Q epinephrine. If that patient um, has, they're known to have allergies. They have that um, epinephrine. It's a summer camp. 
you're going to give them that epinephrine. And remember, you're going to give it where? In the thigh, where that muscle is. You're going to take off that cap and stick it right in there. And right after that, you're call, calling 911 to get help for that patient right away. Then, you know, lastly, you want to remove this thing, whatever. But our priority, what's most important, is to assess that patient, give them that epinephrine that they should have on the chart, and call 911 to get that patient help. Guys, let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know if you want to see more priority and delegation videos. Um, don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys can catch me almost every day covering other types of questions on my TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.